Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk very briefly about Linux, end of life. What does that mean? Well, uh, Ubuntu was 1810 has now reached the Linux end of life. And so they're encouraging you if you're running 1810, you want to roll up to 1904. The question becomes why, what is Linux end of life and what happens when a Linux distribution reaches end of life? And so first let's talk about the, the three basic types of Linux distributions and there might be more than this. This is the three basic ones you're gonna find. Number one is called LTS or long-term support. Great examples of this, uh, Ubuntu, the even year 04 is an LTS. So 1604, 1804, 2004 is an LTS. What this means is the distribution is going to continue to get software patches, security patches. The system is going to become uh, safe to use, maintain safe to use for usually about five or more years. So you find this in a lot of server areas, Ubuntu servers. You find this in, in uh, Debian servers. You'll find this in um, uh, CentOS. Just a variety of places where you expect to be able to set the system up and keep it running without having to change it a lot other than basic updates. This means that the software is not gonna change versions, but everything is going to maintain uh, security on the internet. So that's an LTS. The next you're gonna find is rolling. So the best example of rolling is Arch. Uh, OpenSUSE also has Tumbleweed, which is a rolling distribution. A rolling means that the system will never need wiped out and reinstalled, even after five years, 10 years. If you keep the system going, what it's gonna do is it's always updating the software. This means you're going to get the latest versions of the software as soon as they're out. One of the downsides of this is that it is going to change your software version. So if you're on, if you're used to Kden Live 18 and 19 comes down the pipeline, it's going to update to Kden Live 19, and all of the uh, all of the feature updates are going to change. Anything that they have have done that you may interfere with your workflow, whatever else, that's gonna get rolled into your distribution. That's why I don't run those on production, but uh, this computer back here is actually running Arch, and I like Arch. It's just not where I want production to be because I do not want to turn on the computer after an update and have to deal with having to relearn a software package or something because some feature changed. Um, so rolling is the next one. It never gets out of date because everything is always rolling to always the latest versions of everything, which is different from the LTS in that they don't roll new versions, they just roll maintenance and security. The last is kind of the short term. This is all of the rest of your Ubuntu's, several other distributions, they're kind of short term. And you know, like the Ubuntu ones will have nine months. The ones that are not LTS are only nine months supported. So if you go on to 1904 and nine months, you're gonna have to go up to 1910. And then you're gonna have to roll up again. And then you can decide when you're on an LTS if you want to stick on the LTS or move up to the nine month support chain. Now, most of these uh, short support chains, these will have an upgrade path. It's not like after nine months, you have to wipe your entire system out and then reinstall it. It's just a matter of the, the system becomes out of date. You can't stay on that version. You might have to roll everything up to the next. Now, what happens when you roll up? Well, you're gonna get any changes to the software feature packages. You're going to usually get new repos. You're going to get uh, new core, new functionality in the system. Anything in the background operating system is gonna change. In the case of Ubuntu, your, your GNOME shell is going to change. All these types of things are going to happen on your short-term releases. So what happens if you continue to run a short-term release after the EOL, or the end of life? Well, the first is, as we've already mentioned, you're not gonna get any more security updates. This is basically like your Windows losing out. Does it going to mean it's absolutely completely unsafe, you should never touch this thing? 
No, but it does mean that any future major security vulnerability, some Samba share vulnerability, whatever else, is never going to be patched. So if it's a worm affecting your system, yeah, you want to keep that off the internet. It's going to get infected. If it's just some generic issue, you have to download a, a email attachment and click it, that's going to be vulnerable. Um, a drive-by website hijacking, you're going to be vulnerable, that type of stuff. So you basically lose the security updates. Now the second thing is your repos may break. What this means is that you can't get in there and update new software. You may not be able to get in there and install new software. Your entire system could become very unstable. I had this once I was using, um, it was uh, an OpenSUSE, I think it was an OpenSUSE, um, it wasn't Tumbleweed, it was the, the more short-term one, I forget what that one's called now, uh, Leap, I think it is, uh, OpenSUSE Leap, and uh, I hadn't upgraded it for a while. I took out the USB drive I was running on a different system. I go to plug it back in, the entire system won't update anymore because the repo has changed on me. I couldn't do anything. The only option I had is to pull the files, wipe it, and reinstall something else. All right, so your repos may break. Next, um, uh, we, uh, we already talked about that one, uh, making things uh, unsafe against online attacks, you know, that security issues. So when your Linux distribution be reaches end of life, if it's going to be something you're either going to A, want to be on the internet, or B, install new software, you're going to want to upgrade to the next upgrade path. And you're going to want to do it sooner rather than later so that the system doesn't break and not have the ability. That was the problem I ran into my, with my OpenSUSE. If I had been installing updates on that every month, it wouldn't have been a problem. But since I waited, you know, five or six months because I simply wasn't using the operating system, I go to an update it. I cannot even update it. I can't even, you know, go to the next version. I just had no choice but to wipe it. Eh, it was a test distribution anyway, not a big deal. So when your Linux distribution reaches end of life, just be aware of those things. You want to make sure that you are upgrading that path. If you do not want to do those regular upgrades, then you want to find a distribution that is more of an LTS. So what are your LTSs? I like Linux Mint. Those are all LTSs. I'm still running 18.3 on my main video production system. I'm not running the 19 branch. I, I just like the Ubuntu 16.04 LTS better. And that one I believe has security updates until 2023, I think. I might be wrong on that exact number. Uh, but it's nowhere near out of end of life yet. And so I can keep running that safely and securely without having any, uh, any real issues with that. Um, so make sure that you're, you're doing that or other option, hey, run a rolling distribution. Then you never have any of those issues. You just have to contend with the software, uh, software changes. So those are kind of my thoughts on Linux end of life. Um, let me know of anything that I missed in the comments down below. But this is a question that I've seen a couple times on comments and with Ubuntu 18.10 just reaching end of life, it's important to recognize, especially if you're new to Linux, if you're on one of these, uh, these distributions that the end of life has been reached, go in there and update. Now on Ubuntu, it is an option inside of the software center. In fact, it will probably be prompting you to upgrade to the latest one. If it doesn't, then load up that, um, it's not the software center, but it's like the software sources. And on that tab, there's an update tab and you can go in there and you can select to update to the next version. Or if you're used to the terminal, sudo apt dist-upgrade will do that. I think it's dist-upgrade, uh, dist we'll do it. Um, yeah, I think that's the, I think that's the command to do. Uh, so that's how you're going to update. Most of these Linux distributions at the end of life will provide an upgrade path. There are a few exceptions. Like Fedora, I think, does an upgrade path, but a lot of people wipe the system and reinstall the new one anyway. With Linux, though, that's easy. Just grab that home folder, take that off your system, save it in a safe place somewhere, reinstall the distribution, drop that home folder back in, install the, the applications. You will not skip a beat. So uh, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget you can help support this channel by following me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M, that's T-O-M-M, -M, or thinklifemedia.com. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.